In this learning module, you'll be expected to work with polynomials. <coughs> Working with polynomials takes a little bit of vocabulary. So, we'll start with the word polynomials. Polynomials are basically an umbrella term for some other terms that we'll talk about. We have a monomial, a binomial, and also a trinomial. These are all polynomials, but they're specific kinds of polynomials. Monomials only have one term. Binomials have two terms. And trinomials have three terms. Now terms are separated by plus and minus signs. An example would be This is an example of a trinomial. There are three terms. This is one, this is the second, and this is the third. Notice that each term is separated by plus and minus signs. That's how you're able to count how many terms are in your current polynomial. Also when working with polynomials, you need to be able to tell if terms are alike or not alike. So for example, let's give some examples of like terms and also some examples of unlike terms. Now, in order for terms to be alike, they must have two things. One, they must have the same exact variable and that variable must also have the same exact exponent. And that's how you can tell if terms are alike or not. Now, some examples of like terms would be 5x and 2x. They are like terms. They both have the same variable. And both variables have another example would be 4x squared and negative 4x squared. So as you can see, it's not about the sign of the term, it's about the variable and the exponent. Another example would be one third y cubed and four y cubed. Now again, it's not about the number, it's not about the coefficient in front of the variable. Even though we have a determine a whole number, that, that's not what determines whether these are like terms or not. The fact that they both have a y and the y's both have a cubed exponent, that's what tells us that these are like terms. Now some examples of unlike terms would include things like 5x and 5x squared. Although these terms both have the variable x, one has the exponent of 2 and one only has the exponent of 1, so they're not alike. Another example would be, for instance, negative 4 and negative 4x. Again, yeah, they have the same coefficient, but they don't need the same coefficient. That's not what makes them like terms. They have to have the same variable, which this one has x, and this term has no variable. So these are definitely like not like terms. So that means when we start adding and subtracting our terms within a polynomial, we wouldn't be able to combine either one of these. Now, work, let's just do a little example with the set of like terms that we already know are like. Say that we did want to combine these, and I put a minus sign in between. So we have 5x minus 2x. Since they both have the same variable with the same exponent, that means they're like terms, so we can combine them. When you start combining terms, what you're actually combining is the coefficients. So really, I have 5 minus 2, which gives me 3. And of course, I'm going to write the variable x. Combine these two terms was because they all had that same variable. So you want to stay with that. Now let's do some other examples. And when you're not allowed to combine terms, let's look at some problems where, you're have to, well, where you will have to make that decision. Right here we have a monomial 
one term being multiplied by a binomial, two terms. In this case, what you're going to have to do is distribute the monomial, 3x, to both terms with inside the parentheses. So here we're going to multiply 3x squared by 2x squared, and then we're going to multiply 3x by 4y squared. So we multiply 3x and 2x squared. 3 times 2 gives us 6. x times x squared gives us x cubed. Next, we multiply 3x by 4y squared. 3 times 4 gives me a positive 12, and x times y squared gives me an xy squared. Now, whenever you're multiplying polynomials, you always need to check to see if there's like terms afterwards. So in this case, we have 6x cubed and 12xy squared. First of all, they both have the variable x, but this x has a cubed and this x doesn't. Also, this term has a y squared and this term doesn't have y at all. So these two terms are definitely not like terms, so you cannot combine them. So this would be your final answer in the most simplified. Another example <coughs> would be a problem like this. We have x minus 4 squared. Now, a lot of students, when they see these kinds of problems, they tend to want to square both terms individually. But if you do it that way, you won't get the whole answer. You'll be missing a middle term. So it's important to understand that when a set of parentheses is being squared, it's the whole thing that reality you get squared. So in reality, you're going to have x minus 4 times x minus 4. Now when you FOIL this, you will see that you get a trinomial as an answer. So first, we're going to multiply x times x, and we're going to get x squared. Next, we're going to multiply x times negative 4 and get negative 4x. Thirdly, we're going to take this negative 4 and multiply it by x and get negative 4x. And then finally, we're going to take negative 4 and multiply it by negative 4 and get a positive 16. Now again, like I said before, you always want to check to see if you have any like terms after you've done your multiplication. And in this case, x squared is the only term with an x and a squared. But our two middle terms here, negative 4x and negative 4x, these are like terms because they both have x as a variable with the same exponent. And the reason I'm writing this little one is because any number or variable that does not have an exponent listed, you can assume that the exponent is 1. That's why we don't write it. So since these are like terms, I have negative 4x minus 4x. I'm going to, like I said before, combine the coefficients. So I have minus 4 <coughs> combined with another minus 4. Now this goes back to your rules with integers. Since they're both negative, I'm going to add them together, but it's going to remain negative. So I'm going to bring down my x squared. Negative 4 and negative 4 give me negative 8x. Again, I have to write my variable x because that's the reason these terms are alike. And then I'm just going to bring down my positive 16. So as you can see, my answer is a trinomial, a polynomial with 1, 2, three terms. Besides multiplying polynomials, you will also be asked to add and subtract polynomials. Now, adding polynomials isn't really that difficult. For example, 6x plus 5 plus 7x minus 2. So here we have the sum of two binomials, two terms, two terms, being added, to added together. Now, since this is a plus sign, Technically, we don't even need the parentheses. We can just drop the parentheses all together. So I'm just going to rewrite this without the parentheses. <clears throat> now our job is to uh, we have look for like terms. We have 6x and 7x. They both have the variable x with the exponent of 1. And we also have 5 and negative 2 that are also like terms because they're just integers. So 6x 
plus 7x, since they're both positive, we're going to add and get 13x. And 5 minus 2, opposite signs, subtract and take the sign of the higher number. 5 is highest, so I'm going to get a plus 3. And again, you always want to look for like terms. 13x and 3 are not like terms, so they cannot be combined, and th that would be your final answer. <clears throat> now, the more tricky problems are the ones where there's a minus sign involved. 5x squared minus x plus 2 minus x squared minus 6x minus 8. Now, in the above problem, we were adding polynomials. So this plus sign didn't do anything in that set of parentheses. But since this is a minus sign, you're subtracting <coughs> this polynomial from this polynomial, what's going to happen is every sign inside of this set of parentheses is going to change to its opposite. So that means positive x squared is going to become negative x squared, negative 6x is going to become positive 6x, and negative 8 is going to become positive 8. So in order to keep our stakes, let's just rewrite the whole thing with the new signs and without the parentheses. So I'm just going to bring down the 5x squared minus x plus 2. Now, instead of writing minus x squared, minus 6x, and minus 8, I'm going to write these terms with their new signs. Positive x squared becomes minus x squared, negative 6x becomes positive 6x, and negative 8 becomes positive 8. Now that you got rid of the parenthesis sign, you distributed the negative sign to everything inside of that trinomial, <clears throat> now your job again is to always look for like terms. We have 5x squared and negative x squared. We have negative x and positive 6x. And we also have 2 and 8. <clears throat> when working out polynomials, it's also important to always write in descending order. Descending order means write the term with the highest exponent first. In this case, it would be 5x squared and negative x squared. Since these have opposite signs, I'm going to subtract and take the sign of the higher number. 5 minus 1 gives me 4. Since 5 is the highest number and it's positive, my term is going to be 4x squared. I'm going to just cross these out so I don't look at them anymore. I know that I've used them already and I don't want to look at them again. The next term we're going to look at are the x's. These are the, the terms with the next biggest exponent. <clears throat> so here we have negative x and positive 6x. Again, they're opposite signs, so we're going to subtract and take the sign of the highest number. 6x is the highest, so our answer is going to be a positive 5x. And finally, positive 2 plus 8 gives us a positive 10. Our answer again is just a trinomial and there are no more like terms so we would be finished right here.